Hello, and welcome to Gene Keys with Monifa, your path to vocal superpower. The whole series that we're doing on Gene Keys, the in-depth version. I do this because this is about understanding what it means to be human and our experiences that cause the reactions that create our lives and our societies. And that's a lot about what we're talking about today. But what I want you to know before we get started is that there are three vibrations of each frequency of the key. So there's the shadow, uh, the gift, and the city, S-I-D-D-H-I. So I just want you to know that there's nothing wrong with the shadow and the gene keys. The shadow is your key to understanding your gift. So when you understand when the shadow is happening, then your gift is available. And not you don't actually have to understand it's already been happening all your life, but you get more out of it. You feel more joyful if you do, if you're consciously engaged with what's happening, right? So if you get to know when you're being brilliant, then you get more excited and more confident about your brilliance, right? So welcome. I like to focus on the purpose key because it's why you're here and it's what you're made of. Um, and so we don't have to do anything about being on our purpose. We already are our, our purpose. We are the energy, the DNA that makes us be and is already interacting with our environment, the people around us in a way that is beneficial to the planet. And then again, do we get to be in joy and collaboration and co-creation with that? Or are we fighting against it and uphill battling the energy of what we're made of? So yeah, I'm the person that is here talking about spending time on contemplating this information, but you're the person, if this is in your profile, it's more important for me to just be here in collaboration with you uh, understanding your own energy. When I meet somebody with a dominant energy type, I'm like, oh, that's what that means. Actually, you're the person or you're the being or the energy framework in which this understanding is being made more clear. So you're more clear on how this works for you than I am, believe it or not. So what you want to do is go ahead and, and find out what's your legend around this energy, this exploration of emotions, feelings, and evolution. See what comes up for you. And then what you get to do is write, rewrite your legend, rewrite the story of your, of your um, legendary abilities. <laughs> this is how we start to build a legacy. I also love um, sharing this information because again, we all have all the energies and we get to be reflections for each other. This is Gene Key 59, line six. The shadow of dishonesty, the gift of intimacy, and the city of transparency. In the book, this chapter is called The Dragon in Your Genome. There's quite a few references to the dragon or the serpent or the feathered serpent, as he talks about in the city of which he calls the return of Pensacoatl. Really, it is talking about the aspect of uh, evolution that allows us to create. So it's really the sexual drive to create. It is in cohorts with Gene Key 49 and 55, these being also dynamics of the genetic evolution that our DNA is actually evolving from and to. And in 55, that evolution is an awakening. It's a more of a spiritual awakening. It's the, the actual spirit body's evolution, right? And the 59, this is a literal genetic or planetary mutation again that we'll talk about a little bit more in the city so when we're talking about this key of 59 we're really looking into what is the drive to have sex and reproduce and we know most of what our desire for sex is evolutionarily is to reproduce that's what we call our sex drive and when we are choosing mates it is about like what we are attracted to. So what drives us to have sex with 
certain people, right? So I know when I was younger and I was like a little kid, it was always like, oh, I wonder what makes people choose each other. Why does he like her? Why do they like each other? Uh, and then what is that thing that's attraction? And, and really it's the energy and the power behind attraction. So that's what all frequency is. It's really the capacity or the energy or the power to do whatever that archetype is kind of mainlining. And this is rep reproduction, <laughs> the sustainability of our planet and our species, particularly the human being. <laughs> so if in case of anybody else is listening, this is really dealing with our fear of distrusting others and uh, relationships in general. So others are the actual person. I don't know if I like them. I don't know if I like them, but relationships are, I don't believe in, in marriage. I don't believe that you can have a sustainable friendship for your entire lifetime. These are beliefs that we have really because we're afraid of expecting that and then not getting it. Because of that, a quote out of the book is, we rarely communicate with each other with real depth real stuff, right? It's true. And this is why a lot of empaths and introverts such as myself hate societal conversation. <laughs> so surface conversations or social etiquette, these things, people that are interested in the reality of people and what they really believe, what they really love, what they really stand for, don't have a lot of patience for trivial conversation. And this is one of those dynamics where we're looking for that true intimacy, true connection. And so it really is hard for us to kind of have service conversation that has nothing to do with people and who they really are, right? A lot of times because we're reading behind it and we're just like, oh no, <laughs> I don't know what's, what's happening here. And it can be confusing when you're getting to know somebody when they're saying one thing and they are, you're feeling or you're reading something else. And so it makes people not want to deal with people, you know? So this fear is not seated in the person. So it's not necessarily the individual that is, is having this burgeoning of this feeling of not trusting. It is what happens when two entities or people come together. So between those two people is the field. You, each one has their auric field. And then it's the combined field of those two auric fields that, uh, that create the situation in which fear is felt. Okay, so it's the condition in which fear is felt in this instance. So uh, you can be alone and be fine. So this can, like I say, you're married and when you're alone, you're fine. But as soon as a person comes in the room, you get defensive or you get your, you put your guard up or you feel like you can't focus or something is driving this. I'm not sure if I want to communicate with you, right? So that's a good way to find out if it's acting out in the light in your life. And this also, again, anything that's reflected in your chart can be you or can be kind of an energy that's magnified or archetype that's magnified around you. So if you not haven't experienced this yourself, you may have had people experience this around you or when you're in proximity to them. So this in itself, that chemistry that happens in those two work fields that come together is the foundation of attraction. And the foundation of attraction is actually one of the conditions of this key in the Gene Keys book is that something is hidden from the other person out of that fear when they're together. That fear is essentially whatever they are not ready to share will be revealed, right? Or they, or they feel like what if they share it that the dynamic will completely change and uh, the attraction will no longer be there. And in some ways, this is the truth according to Richard Rudd, uh, this, Gene Key, according to Richard Wright, wants us to be dishonest. Why? Because uh, it, it has kept us in our differences. So whether that's a cultural, whether that's tribal, whether that's 
intellectual theories, spiritual theories, all of these are different ways in which we've created differentiation and separateness from other types of persons, right? So when we have that high level of differentiation, evolutionarily is actually a good thing because it creates a more powerful resolution or transcendence of the frequency. A lot of times this fear is what keeps us from recognizing our common genetic ancestry. This is so powerful right now because we're seeing this happen across the planet and it's been happening across the planet. Um, but especially right now where I think of a lot of the conflicts happening between countries as people who are fighting against their brother. And the reason why I think of it that way is because of the land I'm perceiving or the earth that they're on, that part of the earth they are on is the mother. And so with that perspective, you're fighting for somebody who comes from the same land or womb that you come from. And so when that's happening, it's usually out of this idea. And I feel like especially in religious dynamics, this happens out of a fear that the other will find out that there's some level of flaw within their beliefs, within their understanding, within their intellectual theory or spiritual theories. It's something that keeps people at war. The programming partner here is the 55th gene key, which is the shadow of victimization. And so what, what happens is when we're in this dynamic is that what keeps us in this level of dishonesty is that well, we feel like we, we are victims to the other party or that they will victimize us if they knew or create worse victimization if they knew the thing that we are hiding. That is a real thing. And I think it's actually really great information. Somebody should, you know, at the UN should go tell. On. I feel like that could be a quick resolution uh, because I feel like we're still trying to hide things that everybody knows now. You know, if, you've, if you're on YouTube, you probably already know that there are a lot of similarities between groups that are fighting and that there are other powers that be that are causing the continuous conflict and it's no longer about the information or the religion. Anyways, there's also, <laughs> um, what, so in this function, again, it, it's keeping our gene pools separated, which allows us to have higher differences. So, and then uh, creates even greater power when we finally come together. And so it basically slows down that process of dissolving the lines between creed, belief, and genetic family. So this is like kind of the thing that keeps us wanting to be with people that look like us, right? And so what that does when we stay in this shadow and this fear is it allows ancestral fears to perpetuate because they can still be perceived visually by our differences. So the more that we drop the fear and connect across higher differences, the more that we can see past the agendas of the, what's been hidden. And that's how we are hitching a ride on this here evolution and a revolution, which is <laughs> the last key I, I put up. So if you wanna hang out uh, a little bit longer, the other key that we did last time was gene key 49, which is the gift of re revolution. It's about who gets the power, who keeps the power, who can keep having the power instead of sharing the power. In order for us to get past this, we have to look at our own ancestry and dirty laundry. This can, again, just be ancestrally, but this can also be with your intellectual ideas. Like, where did you pick up that spiritual idea that you have to be humble? Where did you pick up that spiritual idea that um, women, predominantly gendered women, are the helpmates, and which means something completely different from being the person that is helped, <laughs> right? And that that there's no yin yang there. That that's just a, a common and permanent state that you never alternate, right? This perception that one is always doing the work, the real work, and the other is not.
And when do we argue for that? When are we reclaiming that we are victims to that understanding? And how are we clarifying that we are not and that we won't continue to be victims to that dynamic? The, a quote that I feel that was important to include is, if you move against evolution at such a time as this, you will meet an opposing force whose power is incomprehensible. Again, we're talking about the, the power of creativity, of creating other life and human beings. It, just the idea that we, we create life every time we create another human being, that by itself should tell you the level of power at hand here, Something creating something out of nothing. There was no person there before, and now there is a person living in a belly, right? Like, can we, can we really think about how we come to be? <laughs> because I don't have children, so I haven't had a physical realization of this. But it is mind boggling, the creative capacity at hand and this energy or frequency of the Gene Key 59. It's mind boggling, right? On the repressive side, this looks like being excluded. This is the victim state that blames others instead of taking responsibility for their own feelings. And it allows us to stay in the illusion that we are in control of our emotions or in control of the situation that is causing the emotion. And it's an illusion because you wouldn't, you wouldn't be feeling like a victim if you were truly in full acceptance, awareness and allowing of our emotions. So deciding that you will include yourself will break this cycle. So you just decide that you're gonna include yourself without the illusion of victimization that you, have, you deserve something or something has to be done because you have been victimized, right? So because the next one's gonna sound very similar, <laughs> which happens a lot with our repressive and reactive, right? Our reactive side is intrusive. This is the, the anger are reacting out of the anger of being excluded. So in this expression, we intrude or push our way in and in a disruptive way, evading others emotionally and in their aura. So like you can do this physically, you can do it emotionally, you can do it within the energetic field of frequency. You can push your way into somebody's energetic field, which is why some empaths can feel violated without and like any words even being discussed or even you know any anything actually happening physically they can still feel a true sense of violation if they are feeling like they're being intruded on without permission right so just recognizing when that's happening so that we can own our emotions and then clarify them so this means that even if you they aren't doing anything, <laughs> clearly knowing when you want to leave that situation, clearly speaking, if uh, you need to define that situation because you both have to work in the same space, so to speak. So it's important, again, that we are actually, actually being in awareness and operation of our emotions instead of, of trying to control the situation out of our emotion and then dominate the situation out of our emotion. So this is where war comes to hand, right? Because it's kind of like, well, if you need to victimize others in order for you to feel a sense of control, then that means you haven't fully accepted the truth of who you are and where you stand, right? So that is, that's that perception. Uh, this is a quote directly from the book. Such people will try to dominate their relationships in order to avoid rejection, which means they can never stay with anyone who is honest enough to challenge them. So this is something that, uh, that people will do, right? If, if somebody challenges that you're taking this idea too far, uh, then you just leave, right? And you have every right to just leave, but that means you can never have a true, connected, intimate relationship. And that is the gift, intimacy. So intimacy, quote, the 59th shadow represents the unbridled, fertile power of your animal sexuality. Then by raising its frequency, you unlock the transcendental power of sex. So this is really this idea of the kundalini, the kundalini rising, that your sexuality is a force, that desire to create 
and be sexual is a force within you that you can actually use to lift your energy, your frequency into a higher level. In that desire to do so, we work at resolving our issues around sexuality, right? So this is why a lot of people have a spiritual work of sexuality so that a lot of these are on a path of things like Tantra, right? That may not always be talking about sex, but that sex can be a part of the conversation of how we are living the experience of transcending our separation and unconscious self. And the chain, the hexagram is dispersion. And I love that word. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to, that's why I'm talking about it. But this is really the idea that we were trying to be as, as abundantly creative as possible. So this even idea of spreading the seed, of spreading the creative capacity is the dispersion. And this element of the energy is often modeled in the, the relationships of, of man and woman as a, as a gendered archetype of partnership. So the quote from the book is, the traditional male reaction is to try to escape being tracked, by, trapped by a single woman. This fear of being trapped is the polarity of the 55, 55th shadow of being a victim to trap, being trapped, right? That is a trap, <laughs> is a victim, a victim perception, right? Um, and then the female reaction is to try to hold on to the male aura because of his promise of protection for offspring. So again, it's kind of this victim positioning of I will, I need the, the result of you being able to stay to sustain myself. And so there's just different sides of the same coin. There, you know, people have been arguing for the victimization of their nature forever. And uh, so there's nothing new there. <laughs> Uh, including myself, as I often say, us and we. So, you know, it's part of being human. There's nothing to be ashamed about here. Um, <laughs> not in this space, anyways. This is also represented evolutionarily in the symbology of the serpent or the dragon and the ability to shed your skin of the previous perception of victimization. And the real, tr the truth of intimacy happens when we can be honest about what we see as less than within ourselves. So our shadow states, we can, when we can be honest about when we are being in our shadow, when we can be honest about that our shadow is um, part of what's driving our, our desires or requests or needs to be met, um, then we can have a more balanced conversation of what it looks like to support ourselves, um, when we need to be supported, um, whether within ourselves or within a dynamic of the relationship. The quote is, this means that the fears between the sexes must be acknowledged, understood, and allowed to exist. In the shadow, there's nothing wrong there, but it's then the, the lack of awareness that these fears and victim stories that create the pressure to, that allows the relationship to be broken or um, dishonest for that dynamic to dissolve. When you allow that image to be dissolved, then it unleashes the power of sexual force. This is a raw power and it can be both highly creative and highly destructive. But again, when you think about the power to make another human being in your body, you can see like how much potential when you're there, you know, it starts with two little tiny cells and then the one become two, the two become four, the four become eight. Yeah, that is, and then it becomes its own entity. Like it's it's crazy, it's crazy. And, and to even fathom that amount of power, we realize like how much of a strong dynamic this is. Um, the, we feel the dissolution of that separation or separateness the separative patterns of who we are as human beings, as the ego. So that's how we experience it. So how we define ourselves, our personalities, and who we be in the world, when we are able to dissolve those things, 
then they allow for the transcendence of that sexual power and energy into something truly spiritual, something truly evolutionary. So as opposed to the 55th key, which is, is about the, the pure spiritual awareness transcendence, this is actually about our species transcendence. So it's our physical body. It's our physical body at play here and our physical planetary body because we are made of this earth. Okay, so that is like, um, could be debated, but, <laughs> but in essence, we are um, being sustained by this earth either way. So even if you want to debate the first part, you still have to re recognize that our food is generated by the earth, right? So we are still being sustained by this earth. And uh, the potential for energy here is not not the masculine version that is just kind of purely ascensive, right? It's that aspirational 55, but it is actually chaotic. It's the it's the wildness and the untamable possibilities of the universal patterns. So there are patterns, but they are not linear. And so it can look like chaos, and that's how it's currently defined, but things like chaos theory and the power of one or the universal one, or I don't know, there's books now that are being read <laughs> or talked about that talk about this understanding that chaos is a perception, not a, not a reality. Um, and the reality is there is a universal pattern to everything. And they see that pattern playing out in the concepts and theories of spiritual or spiral <laughs> spiritual spiral geometry and the Fibonacci. So like I think of that as the Fibonacci sequence in which is like that radiation of sp spiral that allows for things to continue to proliferate and expand in unexpected ways. So yeah, so pattern, cha chaotic pattern, there may be connections between things, but they are um, unique and they don't play out in the same way at every stage. It's also this understanding of there are there it may have been linear when there was one entity, uh, an auric field, but when you combine two entities, persons and auric fields, there is an automatic third. And what that new combination, that chemistry that happens within those two fields creates that new entity of being, which is crazy because Daryl and I, which is my husband, we did a show about this, about how we consider our marriage a third entity. We think, we think of it as, a, as our child in a way. So it's been alive as long as we have been together, right? So it was created when we, when we decided to be together and it has grown in the ages and stages of that time frame. So it's, I think it's a very powerful way of seeing relationship as well so that we can recognize that there is the, that we can still maintain who we are and be authentic and be self-sustaining as who we are and then still feed, nurture, sustain the third that we created the relationship itself. When we are able to transcend this idea that there's only two, that there's a third that transcends uh, the two, or becomes an effect of the uplifting spiral of the two, uh, then we are sublimating the sexuality as purely for reproductive purposes, actually. So in my opinion, but the actual quote is, <laughs> the quote is, a sublimation of sexuality is a shattering process in which chaos must be experienced before the higher emergence is perceived. So it's not that it's not happening, it's already happening as soon as the fields meet, but how are we perceiving it? And therefore using it as an awareness to create consciously, co-create with that energy. Um, when we do that, quote, as this heart opening occurs, true intimacy is born and two people meet within a single awareness. When we're dissolving that hidden agenda, right? then a true single awareness happens. When you feel like you no longer have to hide parts of yourself in order to be 
uh, in love and to be connected and to be attracted to each other. That is when we are tr transcending with the heart. Richard Rudd talks about in the book that intimacy is not when pe two people are in the same room. It's not when they're living together. It's not even when they're married. It is when they can have a truly honest conversation with each other without hiding. Yeah, so this obviously requires that open-heartedness and that's what allows for the higher possibility. And I found that that attraction happens in a lot of ways, large differences, creating the dynamic of, well, if they knew this about me, they would, they maybe think less about me and our willingness to say it anyways. Um, and the fact that we can never be fully known is what keeps the attraction alive because we're constantly evolving in and of ourselves. So there's always something new to reveal. And this to me is why there's, there can be lifelong friendships. This is why there can be lifelong relationships and marriages. Uh, so my two cents, I felt like I wanted to add into this lovely rendition. The city is transparency. He names this section, the return of Quetzalcoatl. The feathered serpent is another name for Quetzalcoatl. And it's the mutation of the solar plexus. The evolution is actually happening planetarily as well of the planet. So all living things have an energy body and the planet has an energy body. And in that energy body, there's a solar plexus center. And in that solar plexus center is where the evolution is happening in this city transcendency. And so the evolution of the planetary heart center. So instead of the illusion of separation and the differences and being different, we are so openly and open and honest that the dispersion of all aspects of self dissolve back into the sea of creation. So that's that I Ching coming back, right? The dispersion. And uh, when we are dispersing ourselves as a unity consciousness, then that is the evolution that will be shown through the planetary cycle. In this space, there's no agenda, no purpose, just a conduit of consciousness. The trick to this, to live in the city, is a constant forgiving of yourself and allowing relationships to be the true mirror of self. This is when it's really important to know your archetype because this key could be like completely detrimental in a different archetype because another archetype may be working with the with the transcendence of, of codependency. So this is why it's so important for us to know kind of where we are playing out these frequencies. It really can help us be more sustainable in our own beingness. In the city version of this, and again, I think of the city as how this energy is in service with all people in the entirety of the world. And in this energy, it transcends agenda, time, locality, and therefore does not exist. It's the ultimate freedom of power. The quote from the Gene Keys is, the ultimate agenda is evolution. So, woo, how amazing is that? So this city is basically saying that there's an agenda to the creative source themselves. So whether that is God to you or earth to you or a combination of the two uh, for us, <laughs> yeah, that it is the, the agenda of life to procreate, to keep living. And so that, again, that power of the nature of this frequency is highly represented here. Coming back to the concept of Quetzalcoatl, it represents the harmonization of the lower nature, the serpent, and the higher nature, the bird. This is indeed the new epic we are now entering. And so this is another version of this idea is the idea of the phoenix. As always, we are talking about the purpose key and the gene keys, hologenetic profile. 
the purpose key represents our ability to uh, understand our manifestation of who we are in, in our physical body. So line six is about the intent, the cells. So we are really picking up information about our beingness, the truth of who we are through our cellular experience. The sixth line, as always, is, is bringing us into a conclusive idea of the expression of the energy. And in the sixth line, a lot of people are experiencing that things happen around them regardless if they directly interact. They're actually happening just because they're in the room. It's really the auric field or the aura, A-U-R-A, -A, that is doing the talking. So each line has a shadow and a gift as well. On the shadow side, the line six is the judge. And its repressive tendency is being uninterested and aloof. And the reactive tendency is disempowering others to the intellect. So the main block here is when you exclude yourself through your judgment of everything and everyone. This is really that feeling here of supreme detachment. This can be a strength for the sixth line and can also be its downfall. Often the sixth line can, be, can feel distant and aloof and they feel that way internally and people can feel that way about them. They have an ability to funnel all communication, all, all emotional exchange through the mind. And so it feels like not being truly connected, aloof and distant. The result, they can be perceived as arrogant. It can feel like they're out of a touch with their emotions. So when we're living this energy, we have a tendency to react and make others feel completely victimized, powerless. And often the sixth line is not really doing this on purpose, right? The person isn't really trying to be mean, but because they can evaluate from an unemotional place, they can detach emotionally and then judge other people's emotions from, from that distance uh, without engaging in their own emotions. And that feels a lot like separation, right? So the gift here is the visionary. The inner strength is including yourself at every level of life. The outer strength is being a role model for others. And the highest potential is your trust in life helps others to trust themselves. So in the gift here, the six line person has to trust themselves and people and their processes, which can also include trusting when they aren't feeling anything. The more we're in awareness um, and that we allow that awareness to come into the body, the more the sixth line has the experience of the mind not having the answer that leads to the result that they actually wanted. The sixth line may take some time to have their emotions to come to the surface. So that's not that they, they never have an emotion. It's just that sometimes it takes time for it to transfer through all those cells and be realized in actual emotional reaction. In the meantime, it's a great to communicate when we don't have emotions to express ourselves and tell people that you need time. So we can tell people that we don't know how we feel about that yet. I will tell you when I know myself, or I will tell you when I've had that realization. When you have the experience of how emotions get to a depth of insight that is far beyond what your mind put together, you'll start trusting that more because it helps you feel alive and feel truly connected to your body, right? To this, this current manifestation of your physical being. At its advanced stage, we really feel that the mind is actually in harmony with the emotions. So you don't have to, there's no separation between the two and that the vision emerges from there, the capacity to be in oneness with your emotions and your, and your thinking. It allows for a deep sensitivity to the rhythms and, and movements of life unfolding. 
and to attune to deep wisdom that can only be found cell deep. So key 59, line six together. It's amazing how these are lining up. I don't, uh, I rarely intentionally do this, but, but it is true that in the shadow, the sixth line is the ultimate victim, right? So that's that mirroring of our 55th shadow, right? From the 59th gene key. And it allows us to be in dishonor to, to just, um, to let the mind deflect so that it never has to admit that it doesn't understand its own emotions or that there is an emotion or that there's anything wrong um, and that they are right uh, uh, regardless of emotion. Okay, so it can look like being in a relationship when uh, deciding that the other person is wrong. So therefore you have no need to have a conversation about how they feel, right? Um, or you can dis disregard other people's feelings out of the knowledge that they are wrong. But if you give yourself time, then you, you often feel the, the kind of blowback of what emotion is caused when you neglect others' feelings. You'll find that people will call you judgmental even though you don't feel like a judge, right? You, you don't think that you're judgmental, you're just being logical, so to speak, or mind-centered, so to speak. You just, it's not your fault, you're logical kind of feeling. So when we're in this space, we're more interested in being right than we are in having the emotional connection. And when we take time to settle down and into our ability to feel, we get a deeper understanding that transcends any fear of separation. So the fear of separation in the 59th key will play out as the judge. So that, that shadow there of dishonor is basically about being excluded and that feeling of, oh, I'm judging them for excluding me. So whether that judgment means that I don't need anybody and I can be by myself, or that judgment means that I'm going to react and I'm going to intrude and intercept anyways, regardless of anybody's feelings in the room, because I know better, or I know that I'm right for being here. That's that shadow trying to play out. But in the, the gift, right, it's saying, I'm more interested in, in the connection and the deep wisdom that is derived in our connection and who we are together. So what that third being is created and the deep wisdom that serves all the people in the room. And it creates this service to the whole is how, again, how I think of it, which is the ultimate ending for anything. And, and that service to the whole, allowing transparency regardless of our fears of being judged or excluded. So it can actually be a really beautiful energy that helps people be not just in community and co connection and collaboration with each other, but also is creating exponentially wise outcomes and, and creative products in a way that would never happen without them in the room. Yeah, it's pretty beautiful. <laughs> it's pretty beautiful. I'm so deep in the energy right now. And it's and it is it is a little for me, it feels a lot more detached than I'm used to being. I'm actually an extremely emotional person. And a lot of my energy, my energetic capacity comes from emotion. So in this energy, I I almost feel like not that I don't have the energy to, to do this because I'm doing it, right? It's more this feeling of I could, I could take it or leave it. I could take it or leave it. <laughs> like I could do this. I could not do this. I could do a vocal contemplation and I, and I couldn't, you know, I could just like go to bed. I don't know. <laughs> so I get, it wouldn't mean a lot of difference. But when I am taking time to be in my heart. I realize it is aligned to who I am and what I'm here to do. So here I am doing it. So this is my vocal contemplation of Gene Key 59. 
line six. Oh. 